Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Dill Bozer's Den. Today, I will be discussing Wormed in their newest album, Omegon, oh released through Season of Mist Records. It has been eight years since their prior full length, Krieg Zoo, from 2016. What you will catch is that this is the second part of this narrative that they started with that album. What a narrative it is. I wish I could dig into that a little bit more in depth, but I am a sloped forehead caveman of the Arkansas variant. And uh, the only thing I could come up with is it has to do with the last human in the cosmos and where this band has been releasing uh, intergalactic terror driven death metal since the year of 1998. They're now dealing with a situation that moves in between worlds and dimensions. If you want to delve a little bit more into the band's story plot for this album and narrative, check it out. There's a lot of great videos and reviews that have dug into this uh, story plot a little bit more than maybe I can wrap my head around. Definitely makes me think of Ridley Scott a little bit. The quote from 1979's Alien is, no one in space can hear you scream. I, You know, I, I would say that Wormed has proven that as well as... Uh, Digging into different dimensions, it kind of feels like a quantum leap situation. Let's go ahead and dig into the lineup a little bit here. We have the lone two original members, and this band uses pseudonyms in place of their names, kind of like uh, Zampantli does. But what I enjoy about these is they are very Terminator 2-esque. And forgive me for mispronouncing these, but we have Gelmoth on bass, Phlegaton on vocals, and Phlegaton has done vocals on one of the Imperial Triumphant albums, Alphaville. Phlegaton has done all of the artwork for the band since the beginning. He's also done artwork for bands such as Unfathomable Ruination, Catalepsy, and Benighted. You also have Mega Loud on guitars, and you also have the debut from two brothers, V. Kazar on drums and D. Kazar on guitars. And what I've learned about the lineup of this band is they divvy out writing credits pretty well. It's a pretty collaborative effort here. V. Kazar having some songwriting credits on here, D. Kazar having some songwriting credits, as well as being very new band members. What I've noticed is they just add more fuel to the fucking machine. Wormed always seems like if Fear Factory and this very mechanical kind of sounding band got into brutal death metal, got into slam, got into dissonant death metal, you know, in a different world, I think Wormed could have written their own version of Demanufacture and it would have changed everything for extreme metal. So you've got a couple new guys in the band, you got a couple guys returning, but let's get into the recording side of things. The band has got a list of people that have helped work to make this album come to fruition. You have Simone De Silva, who has worked with bands such as Snorlax, which is kind of a black and death band. He's worked with a sludge band Resin Tomb, but he's also the owner of Empty Hall Studio. He mainly worked on the editing side of things. And with a band like this, when you hear the word editing, a lot of people are going to have a pre-existing idea that this band is not actually recording the parts themselves. But when you're making music like this, a little editing has to be put into there. Things have to be moved around. This is a very precise technical band and when we get into the bulk of this record, you'll understand. They've also got Ikats Garmadia, producer and recording of this album. He owns Blackstorm Studios. And then you have mix and master extraordinaire Colin Marston of, you know, Behold the Arctopus, of Gorguts, of Crowless fame. He is the owner of Minigroth slash The Thousand Caves, which is currently having to move its locations. There is a shirt that you can buy through Night Shift merch to help benefit the moving of this property. So I suggest definitely checking that out. Colin has mixed and mastered and recorded many, many great bands and has done a lot of work and made bands just sound even bigger than they already do. And the fact that he's having to move something like that, I believe we had a very similar situation with the pit recordings that had to make a move. So let's, you know, let's lend those guys a hand, go pick up a shirt. I need to pick up the fucking shirt myself. But let's get into the artwork. As I mentioned, Phlegaton, uh, who is the vocalist, does all of the artwork for the band. So as you can see here to my left, we have this great, beautiful piece of artwork that definitely reflects and fits the band's theme and fits the band's, you know, mindset. Now let's dig into the album a little bit. Automaton Vertiluge. Man, it opens up. It's dissonant. It's weird. It definitely makes me think of like Outer One's era revocation. Or maybe it's the fact that Dave from Revocation may be pulled a little bit from Wormed. If you look back within the last five to seven years, you'll see that Dave's been uh, sporting a 
different worm shirt throughout the years. I mean, why wouldn't he? It immediately made me think of Outer One's era. Wormed is definitely a band that is owed a lot of credit when it comes to maybe some of the wilder and spacier sounding aspects of modern death metal. I also felt in this track in particular, there's some Meshuggah kind of grooves. I mean, it's all over the album. It makes me think of uh, Meshuggah's Colossus record, just the kind of weighty, almost brutal breakdowns that this band has. Wormed does what the Faceless wanted to do with Planetary Duality. Obviously, that band maybe didn't live up to the expectations that a lot of us had for. Wormed has definitely done that and done that tenfold more. I'm sure a band like this, you could owe a little bit of credit to, you know, Nocturnus the Key, such as a track like Pareidolia or Robotica. It has the slams that I mentioned before. It's got these breakdown grooves to it. The band is very off kilter with how they tie in their grooves and their breakdowns a lot. Then you get into a track like Proto God that is, God, what a, what a fantastic track. It makes me think of like Colored Sands, Aragorga to the beginning of it kicks right into these breakdowns. I mean, there's so much shit going on in these on these tracks and these albums that it's just mind boggling how somebody can keep this stuff together. I have not had a chance to see Worm live. I hope that I get a chance to see this band. The band is also not ashamed to wear its influences on its sleeves, a la Cryptopsy, which is all over this album to my ear, you know, on a track like Pleo vs. Omninertia, where Cryptopsy has this great vibe of the train is about to go off the tracks, but they pull it back on just enough time. And Wormed has that as well, added in with all of their other influences that they have. The breakdown at a minute and 23 on this track is literally just jaw dropping to me. The band is also not ashamed to put a soundscape track in here to add to the vibe of the record, kind of break it up a little bit, go from the A side to the B side. This track, Malignant Nexus, definitely brings in that Fear Factory, Terminator 2 kind of vibe. I like all this shit. I like spacey shit. I like sci-fi shit. Then we go to Virtual Teratogenesis. This might be the most consistent track on the album, the most straightforward that you would see. You know, those Cryptopsy influences come back in here, which are all over the record. You have that standard wormed groove that they have starting at a minute and 38. It's the band doing what the band does best. The band doesn't deviate too much from what they do. They add a little bit more of a progression in their sound, which I'm okay with in death metal. Cannibal Corpse has been doing it for almost 40 years. I don't need the band to reinvent the wheel anytime they put out a record. And sometimes when you've got as long of a gap in between releases with a band like this, just hearing a new record from them that is just a finely well-oiled, technical, dissonant, slamming, brutal, intergalactic death metal band that they are, I just want to hear more from them. The band is very prone to hold their own with like modern death metal bands with etheric transdimensionalization. Most deathcore bands would kill to come up with an intro on a track like this. Huge grooves all on this track, almost some portal style dissonance involved in it as well. This track in particular makes me think that the band is from Canada, not only with the Cryptopsy influence that, that the band has, but also with current peers such as uh, Atre Billis and their uh, Homicide album. They're able to keep the songs interesting without just feeling like a riff soup or riff salad. Goddamn, this this might be my favorite track on the album. You got some suffocation influence, maybe even the self-titled record, which is a personal favorite of mine, in Gravitational Servo Matrix. And then we get to the grandiose title track, Omegon, oh eight minutes in length. There's some parts in the song that make me think of Decapitated's Organic Hallucinosis. You know, this is a song that definitely feels like a final battle between these two omnipotent beings of this this story. This is the type of band I would love to see a graphic novel associated with just to dig into all this. Maybe the band would do something like that. Maybe the band doesn't give a shit. I would love it. I would love to tie it in with this record and listen to all the band's albums while reading the record. This is a fantastic, brutal death metal band. Anytime I listen to this band, I kind of want to watch Pacific Rim just to tie in with all the big kaiju and big giant robots. This is a great fucking record. One of the best brutal technical death metal bands out there at this point. I'm glad to finally hear something from them after an extended period of time away. I hope that they tour the U.S. somewhere near me, somewhere near you. Let me know if there's anything you'd like me to review. I want to take a different approach with the reviews a little bit. Check us out on Twitter. Check us out on Facebook. Check it out on Instagram. We'll be back again with another episode of the Riff Worship Podcast. And until then, thank you guys very much. What's up, what's up?